Welcome to the Virtual X Masterclass podcast, where we bring physical sciences to life. Whether you're a grade 11 student aiming for excellence or simply curious about the world of science, you're in the right place. Today, we're diving into lesson one of course module one, where we'll explore some of the most fundamental yet exciting topics in physical sciences. I'm your host, a dedicated physical sciences teacher, and I'm joined today by an expert in the field, an educator in physical sciences. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to break down today's lesson, unpacking each concept in a way that's easy to understand and apply. Whether it's understanding vectors, motion, or Newton's laws, we'll cover it all. Absolutely. But before we dive in, let's answer an important question. Why should you study physical sciences grade 11? Great question. Physical sciences isn't just another subject. It's the key to unlocking how the universe works. Think about it. Everything from launching rockets to understanding why your car stops when you hit the brakes is governed by scientific principles. By mastering physical sciences, you develop critical thinking, problem-solving skills, and analytical reasoning, which are essential in fields like engineering, medicine, environmental sciences, and even space exploration. Exactly. And at VirtualX Masterclass, we make learning engaging, interactive, and results-driven. At Virtual X Masterclass, we don't just teach, we make science come alive. Our lessons are structured in a way that ensures 1. Conceptual clarity. We break down complex ideas step by step. 2. Real-world applications. Every topic connects to real-life scenarios. 3. Interactive learning with visual demonstrations and worked examples. 4. Expert guidance. You learn from top educators, ensuring clarity in every lesson. And the best part? You can study anytime, anywhere, at your own pace. By the end of this course, you will understand scientific laws and principles that govern motion, energy, and matter. Be able to apply physics and chemistry concepts to real-world problems. Develop the confidence to tackle grade 12 physical sciences and beyond. Be fully prepared for university studies in science-related fields. That's right. And now, let's explore Lesson 1 of Course Module 1. Welcome to Lesson 1, Understanding Vectors and Scalars. This lesson is part of Course Module 1, Mechanics in the Physical Sciences Grade 11 Syllabus. Our focus today is on the foundational concepts of vectors and scalars, which are crucial in solving problems related to motion and forces. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to 1. Define vectors and scalars 2. Differentiate between vector and scalar quantities with examples 3. Grasp the importance of direction in vectors 4. Apply basic vector concepts to physical scenarios Keep these goals in mind as we progress through this engaging session. Let's begin with definitions. Vectors are quantities that possess both magnitude and direction. Examples include displacement, velocity, acceleration, force. On the other hand, scalars are quantities with only magnitude. Examples include distance, speed, time, Massachusetts. To make these concepts relatable, let's explore some real-world examples. Vectors, displacement, 5 kilometers to the east. Force, 50 newtons upward. Velocity, 30 meters per second to the west. Scalars, distance, 10 kilometers, speed 60 kilometers per hour, time 2 hours. Notice the difference. Vectors include a specified direction while scalars do not. Why does direction matter? Let's break it down. First, displacement versus distance. Distance is the total path length, a scalar quantity. Displacement is the straight line distance from start to finish with direction, making it a vector. Second, velocity versus speed. Speed is scalar, like 50 km per hour. Velocity incorporates direction, such as 50 km per hour north. Understanding this distinction is crucial when analyzing motion. Vectors are typically represented using arrows. The arrow's length represents magnitude. The arrowhead indicates direction. Example. A 10 Newton force directed to the right is shown as a horizontal arrow pointing right, labeled 10N. Now that we understand vectors, let's talk about vector addition. How we combine multiple vectors to find a single resultant vector. 
That's right. Vector addition is essential in physics, helping us determine the net effect when multiple forces, velocities, or displacements act on an object. There are two main methods to add vectors. One, graphical method, drawing vectors to scale using the tip-to-tail method. Two, mathematical method, using trigonometry or the Pythagorean theorem for perpendicular vectors. For example, if you walk four meters east and then three meters north, your total distance traveled is seven meters, but your displacement is the straight line distance from your start to finish point. Using the Pythagorean theorem, resultant displacement equals the square root of four squared plus three squared equals five meters. Exactly. This concept applies in real world scenarios, such as determining net force on an object or finding the actual velocity of a boat moving against a river current. That's why understanding vector addition is crucial. It allows us to analyze forces, motion, and more in everyday applications. Now let's switch gears for a moment and discuss scalars in real life applications. Unlike vectors, scalars are simpler to work with since they don't require direction. This makes them useful in many everyday calculations. Let's take an example. Scenario, calculating travel time. Suppose you need to travel 150 kilometers and your car's speed is 75 kilometers per hour. To find the time it takes, use the formula. Time equals distance divided by speed. Time equals 150 kilometers divided by 75 kilometers per hour equals two hours. Since we're only concerned with magnitude here, not direction, this is a scalar calculation. That's right. Other examples of scalar applications include measuring mass in kilograms, calculating energy in joules, recording time in seconds or hours. Understanding when to use scalars versus vectors is key to solving physics problems efficiently. Visualization is key to grasping this concept. Let's recap the key takeaways. Vectors possess both magnitude and direction. Examples include force, velocity, and displacement. Scalars have only magnitude. Examples include speed, distance, and mass. Vectors are represented with arrows to denote magnitude and direction. With these concepts in mind, you're ready to tackle more complex scenarios involving vectors and scalars. Congratulations on completing Lesson 1. Stay tuned for Lesson 2, where we'll delve deeper into vector addition. Until then, happy learning. That wraps up Lesson 1. Remember, physical sciences isn't just about learning facts. It's about understanding how the world works. Absolutely. If you want to master physical sciences, enroll in the VirtualX Masterclass course today at www.virtualx.tv. Thank you for joining us. Stay curious, keep learning, and see you in the next lesson.